this young guy came to see me with a recurrent nail spike. He'd had nail surgery done about 10 years ago and was done very well from one of the local podiatrists. And then somewhat bizarrely, a couple of years ago, a spike had started to form. Here's a close-up of it. Um, so this had been present for about two years, was a bit of a nuisance to him. So he came through to me for a revisional procedure and we've decided that a spiculectomy rather than phenol was best. So we'll take that section out and we'll start off by doing really a straight cut following the side of the nail but coming far enough proximally, sorry you should follow my hand, coming far enough proximally that you're going to catch the most proximal end of the root and then coming round the side in a semi-elliptical fashion. Again coming far enough in this case, far enough mesially so you catch all of that nail matrix. So you take that section out and go all the way down, all the way through down to done. Okay, so we're just going to use, it's kind of similar to Savlon really. Get you nice and clean before we start. And then, I think I took a picture of that the other week, didn't I, when, we, when you came through. Um, so if we get a nice little video of this, we'll see if we can make you a, an internet sensation. So these are these safety needles, we absolutely love them. Andrew, a little scratch coming up, okay? Three, two, one, scratch. And then just a little sting as it goes in. You just feel that stinging underneath your toe, sir. How's that, you okay? So guys, it's now 12.35, tourniquet going on. So these are these little tourniquets that we use. And to be honest, these are the ones that come in the too big and too small variety. I often actually put both up just because it's a bit more belt and braces. And then we always leave those tags on so we don't miss them. Let's check you're still in shot. Under, okay, I'm going to stay there. Don't move. All right, so, so we're going to follow the edge of the nail down and then just come back a little bit. So feel like a little soaring motion and all the way down to bone. That's quite a way in there actually. Yeah, quite a way in there. And then we'll do a semi-elliptical incision. So you can see it's not completely without claret. Now if you have any doubt as to the, the type of tissue that we're taking out, then we would histo those. We don't need to for Andrew because there are as yet undiscovered tribes in South America that know this is nail. But if it's, if you're taking out a little fibro keratoma or any little tissue like that, you can take that out. I'll do a close-up shot of that in a sec. But there is there's there's the nail root, the nail sulcus. So I'm just going to pop that to one side. And we'll just have a little scoop in there. So down to the nail, correction, down to the bone. And then you want to make sure all of that is, 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 is out. And this is a bit where you miss. Coming back a little bit proximally, and in this case, mesially, to make sure you get all of that root out. So just a little bit suspicious of a bit of nail root. Better out than in. There she blows. So. so it's just worth taking Andrew just a little bit of a minute to get all this nail root out. Now it's a little bit more aggressive than that phenol technique that you had 10 years ago. So it does tend to be a little bit more sore. So you probably need to take a few more in terms of painkillers. Different versions. So you can just see now these are actually let's come up to come up to camera. These are actually quite quite sharp and um, we use these for doing um, some of our skin scrapes but it just allows me to get on that mesial sore because it's quite scary in there so you want to be all the way down to bone and get all of that soft tissue out because this is the this is the bit of root you can miss you can see that kind of comes out quite nicely These are useful. You hear that on all the way onto bone. 
and as you come all, all, a little bit further medial and a bit further proximal you'll just come across some fibers from the joint and there's a little, some little ligaments on the side as well so it does start to get a little bit difficult to work out what's root what's ligament what's capsule but it's better to be a little bit more aggressive than not so just here we get that out we've got some local anesthetic left it's an ideal solution to irrigate with a 4-0 proline and the reason we're using a 4-0 and not a 3-0 is because we don't have any 3-0 so 3-0 is a bit nicer but Monica said to me get over it so I'm over it now um, that's a, a new suturing technique you've not seen on the internet before one more should do it so so Andrew typically leave these stitches in for uh, typically two weeks give it a chance to really kind of knit in now I'm as confident as I can be that we've got all the the remaining root out of that okay so a little bit sore when it wakes up so I want you to start on some painkillers as soon as you can so that they're percolating in the system before my anaesthetic block wears off, I'm going to put one more in. Cam so anywhere between five and ten hours. Five, five is about an average, yeah. but it can be a bit sore. It wears off. Have you got my mobile number? Uh, no. And that's why. So you can't ring me tonight while I'm watching something called Bridgerton. Have you heard about Bridgerton? Yeah, yeah it's kind of really. I think for ladies, from what I hear, yeah. seems to be most naked men in it. So it's not really my thing, but. Monica, you know, this, you know this is going on YouTube, don't you, Monica? He's going to see this. You're already on YouTube. Some of all the techniques we done together. Right, big dressing. That's known as a BFO dressing. Okay, we've got one suture to put in the sharps, guys, apart from everything else. And then we're just going to tourniquet down. So that's now 43. Check for revascularization. Make sure that, that doesn't do anything cheeky. That's all coming back nicely and then we put on our creepy bandage. So that's it out. So quite a bit down there, actually, Andrew. That was really quite, it's a bit bigger than I was expecting. Yeah. But it's, it's a nice one to do this technique for, because as opposed to just trying to phenolize again, it means I can physically cut everything out that looks a little bit suspicious. Yeah. Questions, what can I tell you? Anything we've not covered that we've been through? You're still in camera? Uh, yeah, we've, we've moved off a little bit. I should be editing this one heavily. Yeah. Okay, Ruby, you got some sticky stuff. Cushy. Right, we have to do a sharp count now. Right, two weeks stitches out. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the video. Here's a section of nail. The spicule of nail is at the top as you look at that section, and the matrix is at the bottom and you can see that's an elliptical um, excision but in 3D. I'll put a close up now and you can see there's quite a, really quite a depth of uh, lesion for want of a better term and that's what you often find with these actually the matrix is a little bit bigger than you think. A little bit difficult to get in really with a with a q-tip to do the phenol so this grad type spiculectomy I think is a good option. That's the section that, that came out in, in one piece. And of course, you'll see I went in sharply and with the curette to take out anything that was suspicious. And then we saw the young man back at um, two weeks for stitches out. So this is it, just a skin prep with the stitches in and then stitches out. And I'll follow him up at 12 weeks to check absolutely that there's no sign of any regrowth. Healed well initially and I'm expecting a good long-term result for him.